My name is JT Tran, and I'm the founder of the ABCs of Attraction, which is the number one Asian dating coaching company in America, in the world, I'd say. Because I sucked with women. I absolutely was horrible with women. To me, it was beyond just picking up girls. It became a social movement. I, a five foot five, basically unattractive Asian guy can do it, then you can do it. Moving out to Los Angeles, because I was originally an aerospace engineer, rocket science, right? Did like spacecraft, you know, Air Force satellites, and I thought I was the big man on campus. I did the thing that every Asian person is supposed to do. Get good grades, go to college, get a degree, get a good job, uh, I was making six figures straight out of the gate and had a Mercedes, lived on the beach. On paper, like all of our Asian tiger parents tell us, this is what you're supposed to do in order to be successful and get girls. And I was like, where are all the girls? Where are all these supposed girls that are supposed to follow my lap? Because on, on paper, I was quote unquote, the perfect boyfriend. But in retrospect, really all that was was me at the starting gate. That was like my, I was just a normal guy. It did not make me have an advantage of two other men. And I'm 5'5". Five five. I'm average looking. There's nothing physically very special about me. So back in the day, I was like all oh, like, you know, arrogant. I was like, all right, I want to choose the hottest girls. And I get the results the next day. No one chose me. It's like, all right, maybe my standards are too high. I think we can all commiserate. Like, you know, we're, let's lower our standards. So I did that. Picked half the girls. Got the results back the next day. No one chose me. At this point, I'm desperate. I think some guys can commiserate with that. It's like, all right, I'm going to choose everybody. 100%, even if she's got like a snaggle tooth and a mole and a hunchback. I will choose every single person. No discrimination. I chose every single girl. And I got the results back. And no one chose me. Like, I'd done everything. But apparently, I just sucked. Some way, you know, my game, my personality, just, it was horrible. I didn't know why. I had committed the two cardinal sins of dating, which was, one, being short, and two, being Asian. And then over the course of time, there was a limitation that I found in both the pickup artist community and the Asian American community. And the pickup artist community is like, oh, race isn't a problem, says every single white coach, right? And it's like, oh, race is a problem, just be alpha. Just be alpha and girls will come to you, right? And the Asian American community, all they do is blame. Oh, it's the media's fault. It's Hollywood's fault. It's TV's fault. Without taking any direct responsibility for our own action, right? And there were times I, it was so bad, I would go home and cry. Like, I got races rejected, it's like, so horribly. It was just miserable. i go home and cry. But the next day, I got back on the horse, dusted myself off, and kept trying. And... As I just learned this and went on these adventures and writing a blog, just demand. It's like I had never really thought of making this as a company or a career or anything. But what it was is like the demand was there. I just started gaining like thousands and thousands of followers where it wasn't simply a job. It was a call to service because my fellow Asian brothers needed my help because they would tell me stories of being like getting harassed by racists getting Asian girls telling them that they would never date a fellow Asian guy or like white girls saying they're not into Asian guys. So to me, it was beyond just picking up girls. It became a social movement. Eventually, the way the company and the methodology, the ABCs of Attraction came about was a Chinese Canadian mother had been reading my blog and she called me up and asked me to help out her 17 year old student, her son, you know, his high school student, who had been harassed by neo-Nazis. And I, you know, told her, ma'am, for three days and three nights, I'm going to be the big brother he never had. And that's how I got into this. And I came up with ABCs as a holistic way because I knew that I couldn't teach a 17-year-old kid just pick up. I needed to give him a system that he could grow into uh, to be a full-fledged man and just more than a pickup artist. You know, Asian men, like we are not really seen as sexy or um, seen as des uh, desirable in the West. For society overall, 
Um, in America, we don't really have a lot of Asian role models, and I guess that would implement into the thoughts of women. It's more of a challenge to overcome. Um, they just never thought of us that way. For me, yeah, just it's personal situation because English is not my first language and I'm aware of different culture and like memories or something. So I have to fit myself into this culture, like from, from hairstyle to the way I'm talking. As far as Asian guys, depending whether they're um, like from overseas or born and raised, you know, American, um, I guess they all have in common that they lack confidence and there's something in their mind that's holding them back. There are a lot of different factors that affect Asian American male confidence. Um, obviously this isn't true about every Asian out there, like obviously, um, but there is a significant portion here in America where we are having a more difficult time. I think, I did the calculation, I looked at the U.S. Census Bureau of like 2010 and I calculated that one out of five Asian American men will never marry, right? Part of it is the gender disparity because of China's one-child policy that there are something on the order of 30 million missing Chinese women. Literally, there are not enough Chinese women for Chinese men. And you see these phenomenon in Korea, Vietnam. I think there are 800,000 missing Indian women. So there's literally a difference in just numbers where Asian men are going to struggle in dating. So you have that like hard number. And then here, where we are treated um, on, a, on a social arena, like where we don't have as much sexual value as other men. So growing up, you can start to have a lot of limiting beliefs where, hey, I know Asian, I know like white girls don't consider Asian men attractive, so I'm not gonna try. I'm not even gonna try. Problem is, you know, Asian women aren't limited by who approaches her she has the option of dating anyone who finds her attractive, white, black, Asian. But if I, as an Asian man, limit myself to only Asian girls, and those numbers are dwindling where there is not enough one-to-one, -one, I am shooting myself in the foot. In my opinion, after teaching thousands of Asian men, what I've noticed is sometimes even a tall, good-looking Asian-American guy will have a more difficult time learning confidence than a short, fobby Asian. And at first that was like kind of weird, like why are my fobby Asian students who can barely speak a lick of English doing so much better than a six foot tall Asian American guy that has good hair, good fashion, works out. And as I realized it is when they're growing up in China or Korea, they are the apex male. They are considered sexual. So they don't, aren't raised being exposed to racism like I was growing up in Texas. But someone coming from China, he doesn't realize he's not supposed to be successful. Well, an Asian American, even good looking guy, like they have horror stories about how they were treated with racism. And so no matter how good looking he is in the back of his mind, he doesn't think he's deserving. And so like a fobby Asian guy, I can teach him, I can clean him up, new hairstyle, fashion, you know, how to approach with confidence, how to defeat the stereotypes. That's easy because that's just technique. But say an Asian American guy with very deep limiting beliefs that affect his confidence, that goes into a larger deconstruction of societal conditioning. That's more of a, a mental game where we have to, it's almost a form of therapy, where we deconstruct those beliefs so that he can rebuild himself up and take the action where his belief, his negative belief set doesn't hold him back.